I'm Marco Abel, uh, Chair of the Department of English. It's my great pleasure to introduce our next speaker, Martin Bunda. Before doing so, allow me to say that it has been a delight to attend this wonderful event all week long. And I want to thank James LeSueur and his team for all the hard work he put into pulling all of this together. It's really a terrific and unique event. So thanks, James. I'm, I'm thrilled about this. Um, being German myself, born in 1969, I have a long-standing interest in the so-called long 1968, a term that by now has become scholarly commonplace to reflect the fact that what we usually call simply 68 was both a global event and occurred in more years than just 1968. Some scholars now suggest that 68 really names a period lasting for about two decades from the Hungarian uprising in 56 to the so-called German hot autumn in, of 1977. In between, we find the events around the civil rights movement in the US, including the free speech movement at Berkeley, the events of June 2, 1967 in Berlin, the actions of the Autonomia movement in Italy in the late 60s, the tragedy in Mexico City in the lead up to the Olympics there in 1968, the events throughout the 60s in Japan that culminated in the famous standoff at Asama Lodge in 1972, the overthrow of Salvador Allende in 73, and of course the events in Paris in May and June 1968. More such events could be surely named, including for example Algeria's anti-colonial struggle that led to its liberation from French dominance, and of course Mao's Cultural Revolution. While each of these movements have their distinct national characteristics, that is, they respond to specific national circumstances that are singular to those national histories, scholars of late have been working to establish significant transnational connections among these national events as well, tracing out how, for example, the civil rights movement or the resisting Tupamaros in Uruguay impacted the emerging radicalized German student movement after the shooting of Benno Onozork on June 2nd, 1967, at a rally protesting the visit to West Berlin by the Shah of Persia. However, at times it's ironically also those very transnational connections that mark significant national differences, such as, for example, the visit of Rudi Dutschke, the famous leader of the West German students, to Prague in April 1968, under the auspices of a dialogue between Marxists and Christians organized by the philosopher Milan Machovic, and I apologize for my pronunciations here. Yet that visit was largely a failure, not least due to a fundamental misunderstanding on Dutschke's part. For what his peers in Prague wanted was simply not the kind of socialism that Dutschke and the radicalized West German students advocated for at the time. Or, as an eyewitness argued, quote, in Dutschke's perfectly organized speech, there was no place for any kind of joke or any human weakness. Were it not for his critical rationality, you would spontaneously conclude that he was a demagogue, a zealot, and what's more, a German. In short, an all too familiar figure, before generously adding, but that would be unfair because he is incredibly sincere. Ten years later, Dutschke himself reflected on the blindness of Western leftism in the face of Czech renewal and the belief that the only kind of imperialism that existed had to be American. Quote, I haven't much to say about May 68 in France, first because I was in the hospital at the time, he'd been shot by a neo-Nazi, but mainly because in retrospect the important event of 68 wasn't Paris, but Prague. At the time, we just couldn't see it, end quote. One doesn't have to agree with everything Dutschke says here to appreciate the fundamental point that the Prague Spring was misunderstood in the West, not least by the political left and especially the left students. Indeed, even to this day, and I'm saying this as someone who teaches the long global 68 in the context of international cinema, it's often difficult to understand that dissent, uprising, resistance, and revolution do not have an inherent directional ve ve vector, left, right, or middle let alone one that is always the same. All politics is local after all, no matter how transnational they may also be. I think that many films and television shows about 68 from across the world testify to this, whether as witnesses, i.e. films or TV that were made in close temporal and spatial proximity to the events, or as historiographers, i.e. films 
or TV that were made at some or even considerable historical, if not also spatial difference, and weave into its representational nexus not just the actual events, but also the history of previous representations, and thereby raise the question of how to represent the events and how to respond to those prior representations that have inevitably shaped our memory of those events. Given this, I'm truly intrigued by the work our speaker engages in. That is the work he is best known for in the Czech Republic, namely his work on the history of Czech dubbing, in addition to his duties as an archivist of Czech television. Martin Buda has been working with Czech television in one form or another since graduating in 2006 with a degree in information and librarian science from the Charles University in Prague. Since then, he has worked at the Janáček Academy of Music and Performing Arts Library in his hometown of Brno, and through the EU Screen Project in 2010 to 2016, has coordinated the promotion of Czech television by using almost 1,300 curated videos to explore Czech's rich and diverse cultural history via television content. In 2008, he began his work at the Czech Television Archives, where he has supervised the audiovisual archives and has been involved in their digitization and reconstruction and since 2017 in online archival publication projects. Buddha has been actively promoting Czech TV, history, and its archives through international presentations, including in Stockholm, Bucharest, and Paris, where he participated in a seminar that was called 1968 in the media. I myself spent last September a few days in Potsdam, Germany to attend the inaugural version of a new film festival there called Moving History. Its topic was German TV and cinema's representation of the West German radical left-wing terrorist group RAF from the late 60s through the present. While I had seen a good number of those films before, it was a real privilege to see and indeed discover others that aren't available in commercial form and had to be excavated from the German film and television archives. Seeing those films most decidedly enriched my understanding not just of the RAF and its history, but also the history of German film and TV and its attempts to make sense of 68. Thus, I'm really excited about Martin Buda's presentation entitled Prague's Spring on Television, Seats and Aftermath, for it promises, at least to me, to offer us a fascinating archival view of both Prague 68 and how Czech television responded to and shaped how those events subsequently percolated through Czech society, if not beyond. Please help me welcome Martin Buda. Um, good morning. Um, my presentation will be slightly different from the previous ones uh, because it's based uh, on some audiovisual materials and I have also uh, a lot of slides there, so uh, hopefully we'll make it on time. Um, what I did for this presentation was to uh, go through the archives of uh, Czech television and I was trying to find some, um, some programs, some uh, good sam samples of programs that were uh, important for the whole process of Prague Spring. And uh, I would like to prove that uh, Czechoslovak television then uh, wasn't only uh, reflecting all the changes in the society, but uh, it was, uh, was also playing active role uh, on uh, triggering and uh, on triggering all the changes and towards towards our liberalization. So uh, let's go. Uh, I will start in 1950s. Um, the Czechoslovak television started uh, to broadcast in 1st May 1953. Uh, during the uh, Stalinist era, and at a s in the same year, there was also uh, censorship started uh, by establishing the main administration of press supervision. So television has been, since its very beginning, under uh, control and under pressure uh, of authorities. Uh, but despite of this, uh, in the late 50s, uh, there was some more freedom given to creators uh, because they managed to uh, create a sati satirical program, uh, Don't Be Angry Man, uh, that uh, castigated uh, some shortcomings of everyday life. And it was first a really critical program and also 
first very controversial program. And the result uh, was a real outrage of, of the Communist Party. And uh, many, uh, many creators were forced to leave TV. And so television was recovering from, from this purge uh, till the mid 1960s. Uh, important moment was when a uh, new uh, director general was appointed uh, in 1963. And this person was Yuri Pelikan, who was very, who saw the changes in the society. And he uh, decided to, uh, to change uh, the institution that was considered to be, um, at the time, uh, most conservative of all media. And he, he wanted to uh, give more, uh, more room for, uh, for TV makers to express uh, their, real, uh, their real opinions. Uh, he also started uh, some international cooperation, not only with uh, East European televisions, but also with uh, the Western European television, so he was often criticized for this uh, approach. Um, s I mean, the seats of the Prague Spring itself, I mean, the political events, uh, uh, the most important was uh, abolishing the censorship in, uh, during uh, February 1968, and also uh, appointment of uh, Alexander Dubček and Ludwig Svoboda to uh, to uh, the role of uh, of president and and uh, general secretary of communist party, uh, we from both events we keep some footage in our archives, uh, so I may just play very shortly a uh, clip from from. Uh, oops, okay. Should play out. Vážený soudruhu předsedo vlády, vážené soudružky a soudruzi, předsednictvo Národního schromáždění mě pověřilo, abych vás informoval o tom, že prezident republiky soudruh Antonín Novotný dnešního dne rezignoval ze své funkce a oznámil toto Národnímu schromáždění dopisem so just datovaným téhož dne. I will skip it because we have two Předsednictvo many videos národního... to play. Um, so the role of Czechoslovak TV uh, rapidly changed from, uh, from this time. Uh, Czechoslovak TV uh, tried to, uh, try to discuss new topics uh, that were not allowed to be discussed before, uh, like, uh, for example, the role of Communist Party in uh, Czechoslovakia or the role of uh, women in society. Uh, and also some, some cases uh, from, uh, from the 50s that were forbidden to be discussed uh, before uh, were discussed, like, uh, for example, uh, strange circumstances of that of former Minister of Foreign Affairs, Jan Masaryk. Uh, I would call this era to be a golden era of current affair programs. Uh, I have, uh, um, I, I chose some, some uh, very uh, crucial series for this, uh, for this time. Um, I would uh, emphasize these two series, uh, probes and public affair, uh, they were uh, trying to be investigative and to um, critical uh, to uh, shortcomings of, of uh, society, um, as well as some reportage programs, Mosey Camera and Czechoslovak Expedition. And a very important uh, series was face-to-face uh, -face, uh, series, uh, which gave some room for uh, significant per personalities of uh, culture and political life to make comments on uh, on some some topics. 
um, when I when I was going through the through our archives, I bumped into or came across to a very interesting program uh, that was uh, made in 1967, and it was broadcast in February 68. And I would call this current affair drama because it's not uh, it's it's not it's fictional. It's actually drama, but uh, it's a kind of critical TV play uh, about uh, socialist protectionism and elitism. Um, it's uh, I would just to say something about the story. Um, uh, some residents of uh, a communist official uh, was electrified uh, instead of uh, a village. And uh, so, uh, and also uh, a journalist who pointed to this uh, is under pressure to deny it. And <coughs> this program is important because for the first time a communist is shown here as a bad guy uh, because the main villain here uh, is, uh, is uh, secretary of uh, district national committee named Stoklasa, and we may see some sample where this uh, this guy is forced to explain the whole affair of uh, about uh, electrification uh, in front of the people of the village. Soudru Stoklasa, řekni nám. Jak je to s tou elektřinou? Měl jsem nejlepší snahu vysvětlit vám řadu věcí. Ale varuji vás. Nestaňte se obětí přízemní demagogie. Řekni to, na čem jsme se dohodli. Já za to všechno cítím plnou zodpovědnost. Já jsem měl to levé napsat daleko dřív. My jsme všichni věděli, že tady v obci není prout. Ale tady kousek dál se svítí. Všichni jsme to věděli a mlčeli jsme. Já taky, já v tom se cítím vinen. Ale viděl jsem, že je to levá je v seznamu obcí, které se mají elektrifikovat. Nejde o Tady mám návrh plánovací komise, která to všechno řádně navrhla a rozhodla už před třemi lety. A to skutečnost mi není známa. Vy se to na mě možná pamatujete. Když jsme zaváděli prout do té velké, tak nám paní tady, nám tady vařila černý kafe. Tohle má být schůze. To je Jarnák. Posílá mě sem soudruž Bujnošek. Tady mám Příkaz k elektrifikaci. Kdo dal příkaz na tu elektrifikaci? Tady, v soudruh z okresu. Já jsem ho poznal hned, jenom jsem si nemohl vzpomenout na jeho jméno. Já vím. Někdy vyhrávají i stoklasové. Ale jenom tehdy, kdy se jim nic nebo nikdo nepostaví na cesty. Když je tu jenom lidská lhostejnost. A lhostejnost k lidem. Um, okay, now it may seem to be funny and uh, and naive, but at the time it was quite uh, revolutionary because it uh, shown uh, the top-rated communists to be a real, a really bad guys. So um, another very important series was nosy camera, as I mentioned before. Uh, it became a phenomenon in '62 when mer many uh, creative journalists came to the crew, and uh, they were uh, they were some parts that were very uh, uh, significant, very uh, controversial. I would mention uh, one of them. It was uh, the part that was broadcast in March '64, uh, the choice of profession. And uh, it uh, it was an investigated story of uh, 
of a girl uh, who was dismissed from school due to her class origin, inappropriate class origin. And uh, after it was broadcast, uh, it uh, caused real outrage of the party and it was called uh, to be anti-state program and they were also even <laughs> organized some protest resolutions in the factories among workers and uh, uh, makers uh, were uh, under risk of uh, being fired but uh, Yuri Pelikan, uh, the director, uh, stood it up for them and but uh, the chief of uh, the editorial board was given an ultimatum either he would read a denial on TV or uh, the, the girl and her brother wouldn't be allowed to study at any school or, and her father would be fired. So uh, the chief of the editorial board read this denial, but uh, according to officials, uh, it wasn't truly felt. So uh, the, f the father was still fired from the work. So. And another very important episode uh, was dispute. It was kind of docudrama. It was stage uh, trial between two generations. Uh, on one one side, there was the generation of uh, of uh, people who were young in the 1950s, and on the other side, there was new generation of young people who were uh, born after World War II or during. And uh, the young generation sued the previous generation for betrayal of the socialism. They demanded socialism free from uh, uh, empty phrases, uh, demagogy, and so on. And it was very also very controversial. And it continues in another part. Uh, it was called Jury. And uh, it was inspired by, by 12 Angry Men famous Hollywood movie and it was uh, uh, it was arranged as, as uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, process when the jurors uh, should decide lawsuit from the previous episode and uh, among the uh, jurors uh, there were a lot of uh, very famous significant persons of uh, then uh, of then uh, political and cultural life. For example, they were also famous travelers, Jiří Hanzelka and Miroslav Zygmunt. And I may play you a uh, sample uh, from, from which you will uh, find out why this program uh, was banned. It was uh, made in 66, but it wasn't allowed to be broadcast at all. So it was broadcast in March 68. Víte, my s Mirkem, s panem porodcem Zikmundem, jsme za léta života v 75 zemích světa dospěli k přesvědčení, že je velice zdravá jediná možná myšlenka nebo forma dalšího života na této planetě v mírovém soužití a soutěžení. Totiž i kdybychom to nevyhlásili, samozřejmě svou přirozenou podstatou vývoje Svět soutěží, dvě různé soustavy, dvě různé myšlenky, dvě různá pojetí života soutěží. A v této soutěži nerozhodují hesla, nerozhodují dokonce ani cíle, lákavost nebo morální a humanistická oprávněnost těchto cílů, ale reálnost, jakou k těmto cílům spějeme, schopnost dospět k těmto cílům. Čili je to soutěž mozků. Je to, schopnost, je to soutěž dv, schopnosti dvou systémů využít větší procento mentální a fyzické kapacity národa, který řídí. Já jsem hluboce přesvědčen, že v důsledku právě především diletantismu a nedostatku důslednosti, nedostatku rovnosti mezi teorií a praxí, mezi pravdou a polopravdou, i třeba v zájmu věci, v upřímném přání prospět věci, že v důsledku těchto chyb e, socialistický svět zaostává za kapitalistickým světem 
a kapitalistický svět v ekonomickém a technickém světu, světě naprosto přesvědčivě dokazuje, že umí vyprovokovat, zmobilizovat, zaktivizovat ve prospěch rozvoje společnosti vyšší procento mentální, především mentální kapacity svých národů, to jest mozků, tvořivých mozků. Um, so it was very controversial in 66. And um, there were another uh, interesting episode. Uh, it, uh, it's called Control. And uh, it, uh, TV crew uh, visited uh, the Mirov prison. Uh, and they uh, not only investigated uh, living conditions of current prisoners, but also searched for, uh, for some cases of uh, illegal beating of uh, political prisons in the 1950s. So it was quite uh, revolutionary because for the first time television focused on some crimes of the 1950s. So I may play some sample from a confrontation between uh, then guards who Smrček, whose name was Smrček, who was brutally beating the prisoners and former prisoner, political prisoner Oterambousek. So it's very emotive, emotive discussion. Schytl také za to, že jsem s váma třeba zalobal, že jsem vám dal ránu nebo stříhal těma duškama. Prosím ne, vás, ne, ne, prosím ne, vás, neříkejte to. Prosím vás, tady se jedná o jednou věc. Můj ten je naprosto lokálně subjektivní, já tu nejsem proto. Vy si neuvědomujete toho, že vy stěží najdete v té době vězně, který je. Smrčkovi potvrdí, že byl dobrý. Podívejte, Víte, nemůže, že, bude, že bude stovky vězňů, nemůže potvrdí být dobrý, moje. Protože jsem chtěl ten, to oddělení skutečně Ale vy jste používal metody nezákonné, proto tady jsme. Vždyť já jsem taky tak nervózní z toho, já jsem nic nedělal. V tu dobu, že jsem byl těm velitelem oddělení, abych vás měl tady sekiroval, to ne. Musíte, abych vás byl zbytečně rambouse. Vás odsoudí, jsou slušný komunista, vás odsoudí. Musíte promluvit, jste tady, vy jste tady včera se dušoval já čestný o komunisty a není to pravda. Rambou se já můžu skutečně, zeptejte se, jestli jsem někoho, já nemám tak. Já se nepočím někoho ptát, já mám Děti důkaz. neuhodním doma, co mám doma. Chlapa, já, jestli, tady, já... jestli tady s nějakým chlapem takhle zamlouvám, nebo ho chytnu za límec a vyberu ho někde, ale povahu takovou nemám soudruzi skutečně Rambou se já nevím. Já, já si nepamatuju nevím. na tu dobu, ani na vás si věřím. Soudru kapitáne. My samozřejmě můžeme asi přivezli další svědky, ale já si myslím, že tohle to si budete asi muset vyrovnat se svým svědomím. And uh, so uh, in this program uh, there was also final debate, uh, which brought very uh, brave conclusions, let's say, uh, for the, for the time. So we may just play very very small. A další simple. otázka, další otázka potom je, jestli Všichni, co jsou dnes uvěznění, do těch vězeňských zařízení opravdu patří. A tady bych chtěl poukázat na to, že například podle mého názoru by bylo potřebí v trestním zákoně provést některé podstatné změny, například zrušit soudní trestání nedovoleného opuštění republiky. From this series uh, I chose is an uh, episode called A Testimony for Warning. And a uh, uh, journalist, Otka Bodnářova, uh, investigated uh, the case of the great Trotskyist council. Uh, it was a political trial in 1940, 1954 that followed the, uh, the trial with anti-state anti conspiracy center around, around uh, Rudolf Slansky. And uh, we uh, the main, I mean, the main victims. There were uh, some economists and directors of uh, of enterprises, and we may see some testimony, very very emotional testimony, of uh, of wife uh, of uh, one of the victims of this process, uh, Mr. Rock, uh, whose wife is. Uh, emotionally explaining uh, the circumstances of his arrest. And at the time, uh, 
uh, Mr. Rock uh, was already uh, had passed away, so uh, he was he passed away shortly after he was released from prison. So we'll see. Můj manžel byl začen jako první a bylo to 11. listopadu roku 51. Bylo to 14 dní před začením Rudolfa Slánského. Přijela, přijeli jsem dvě auta, asi ve dvě hodiny, obě děti byly doma, tehdy jednomu bylo 7, jednomu 8 roku, ty vůbec nevěděli, o co se jedná. Manžel, manželovi prohlásili, že je začen a odvedli ho z bytu. Mě upozornili na to, poněvadž jsem tady nebyla sama, byl tady ještě šofér, později pak přišel můj švagr, upozornil nás na to, že kdokoliv sem vejde, je prostě internován v tomto bytě. Tu kalvári, kterou jsem si já s mými dětmi musela projít, tu si prošly snad všechny ženy, které měly muže začne. Za prvé, moje děti chodily mi domů ze školy do krvava zbytý, poněvadž rodiče prostě štvali své, dě, své děti na moje děti, sami je nebyli, ale vyštvali své děti, aby moje děti tloukly, že jsou to děti vlasti zráců. Učitelky ve škole museli prostě před mými dětmi, které museli jaksi u toho asistovat, vysvětlovat o tom, jakýho vyvrhele jsou, vyvrhele jsou to děcka. Zůstala jsem tady úplně bez prostředků, chtěla jsem pracovat, zákon mi práci zajišťoval. Ovšem nezajišťoval mi ani uklid v továrně, nezajišťoval mi prostě vůbec žádnou práci. I všude jsem byla okamžitě přijatá, když jsem tam přišla, já jsem původní, původním povoláním účetní. Jakoukoliv práci jsem mohla dostat, jakmile jsem ale řekla, že, že manžel byl začen, v tu chvíli mě bylo řečeno, bohužel nemůžeme vás přijmout. Tato věc byla pečlivě připravena a dokavať nebudeme vědět, dokavať nebude o naše národy vědět, proč musel být likvidován výkvět našich národů. Něco, co si každý kulturní národ pečlivě chrání. To jsou vzdělanci, to jsou lékaři, filozofové, to, je, to jsou umělci, prostě od, od, od pracovníci v odboji, v obojích, který dokážou ten národ vést, který dokážou ten národ k něčemu pozvednout. Tyto lidi byli zlikvidovaní. Proč? Kdo chtěl z našich národů, z Čechů a Slováků, udělat prostě něco, s čím se dá šoupat ze strany na stranu, který nemá žádný morální ani morální vedení, který prostě tady zůstane bez těch špiček, bez toho výkvětu a teď se s tím může dělat, co chce. Taková věc se může vrátit. A my musíme vědět, odkaď přišla, aby jsme se mohli tomu bránit. Aby jsme věděli, odtaď nám hrozí našim národům nebezpečí. So this was broadcast in June 68, so they made it just uh, months before uh, before the Soviets came here. Um, there's another sample, but I'll skip it. Another uh, very important uh, series was Czechoslovak Expedition. Uh, it was 50-part series, and uh, TV crews uh, were traveling around the country, and uh, they Mm, they were making open documents about uh, ordinary life of ordinary people, and they were fo focusing focusing on uh, on real problems of people, and uh, were uh, showing them on TV uh, very openly. So we may see a sample from uh, from a program f that was broadcast in April '69, and uh, uh, this uh, reportage shows. Uh, some housing problems in Prague. Popište mě, jak tady spíte. Když roztáhneme tuhle tu valendu tady, tak musíme spát místo podílce, tak musíme spát takhle na šíř. Na šíř. To spíte všichni čtyři na té? Ne, tak tři spíme na gauči a chlapiček spí ve vanice na stole. V jaké vaničce? V dětské vanice na koupání. Aha. Jsi s tím spokojen? No určitě asi ne, protože si tam nemůže pohovit tak, jako třeba kdyby spal s náma na tom gauči. Jaké jsou vaše perspektivy osobní? 
No tak já bych si přála, aby jsme dostali nějaký opravdu slušný byt, aby to měl aspoň ten pokoj a kuchyň a na to děcko tu koupelnu, aby se mu měl kde koupat, aby nemusel pořád spát v té vanice a zase ho tam koupat, protože určitě mu to nevyhovuje a nám taky ne, když ho mám přenášet z jedné místnosti do koupelny a zase, když vyvářím pleny, tak ho zase nesu z koupelny sem do té kuchyně a kočárek musím nosit ze třetího poschodí, ze čtvrtého poschodí až dolů, no a zase nahoru ho nosím, no takže toho Jak jste si kdysi představovala manželství? No tak určitě takhle ne, protože jsem si myslela aspoň, že ten pokoj a kuchyň určitě dostaneme. No. Uh, it was showing disappointment of socialist people, uh, like different from the official propaganda. Um, there is uh, another series, uh, probes, uh, only three parts were released, and it was also focused on uh, some imperfections of, of everyday life. And um, this series was uh, re released in 1988 after Perestroika was uh, launched in in Soviet Union, and uh, it's also very interesting. But due to the time, we have to skip some uh, some set posts. Um, another uh, series I had mentioned before uh, is Public Affair. Uh, it was very uh, very special series because for the first time uh, it was given a chance to to real people in the streets to express their opinion on uh, on uh, any uh, any topic so it was real really festival moment for television uh, because uh, uh, they, they could freely express on TV uh, even this series had some uh, controversial episode uh, in 67 there was uh, episode uh, about emigration broadcast and uh, due to uh, this affair, uh, the series was stopped for for six months. It was uh, re-released in uh, March 60, 68. So we have some video here. We may just play very quickly. Ale na Slovensku u nás sa nedá zarobiť. Ja som mal dievča 16 ročí, ja to môžem dokázať, tam bola vyše 2 roky, tá zarobila 1700 korún na mesiac. A ja tu v Bratislave krampáčujem a tých 1400 korún ledva zarobím na mesiac. Tak je tam rozdiel. Teraz moje dievča prišlo na Slovensko robiť, tam už nemôže zarobiť len 800 korún na ten mesiac. Tak taký je veľký rozdiel medzi Česi a Slováci. Utláčaní sme až po zem. And uh, the last series uh, I mentioned, aimed at the current affair programs, was face-to-face -face series. Uh, it was uh, uh, there was a given chance to to some uh, politicians or some other personalities of uh, culture, political life, uh, was given a chance to them to express uh, their uh, their opinions on on some topics, and Eman, uh uh, one of uh, one of the politicians who were often uh, asked in this series, there was Otashik, uh, who was uh, vice uh, vice prime minister at the time, and he was economist and was responsible of um, it was responsible for the new economic model uh, of the um, project of uh, liberalization of economy. So we may just see one sample uh, of him uh, uh, from March uh, 68. Uh, he was uh, answering some questions uh, from auditorium uh, from students about socialist economy. Za jak dlouho jsme schopni dostat se ekonomicky na evropskou úroveň? Zde bych musel položit otázku tazateli na jakou evropskou úroveň? Je zde ovšem pravděpodobně míněno dostat se na úroveň některých vyspělých zemí v Evropě, kapitalistických zemí, za kterými zatím pokulháváme. My jsme udělali srovnání, že žel 
v řadě ukazatelů životní úrovně, pokulháváme za jednou z chudších zemí kapitalistické Evropy, řekneme za Rakouskem, kde se v uplynulých letech dosáhlo vyšších reálných mest a i jiných faktorů životní úrovně než u nás. Když vezmeme věc důsledně do ruky, když budou provedeny oni nutné institucionální předpoklady, o kterých jsem často již hovořil a psal, když bude změněna kádrová politika, jiná kritéria kádrové politiky, jestli začneme důsledně uskutečňovat novou soustavu řízení, domnívám se, že bychom za takové dva, tři roky se mohli dostat na úroveň takových těch, no určitě takového Rakouska a podobných zemí. Samozřejmě dohnat vyspělejší kapitalistické země potrvá pravděpodobně déle. Nejsem ale soudružky a soudruzi prorokem, abych to určil, protože nikdo dnes není z toho říct, jaké máme skutečné rezervy ve výrobě. So it was quite op optimistical, I think. Um, uh, there were also some other important documentaries, uh, uh, for example, uh, to help to the General Prosecutor's Office, uh, which investigated the uh, the case of uh, of uh, death of Jan Masaryk, uh, or uh, Mindrich Feierreiser's documentaries. He was a uh, very significant uh, documentary maker. Uh, so, as as you know, uh, there were some events that stopped all the process, and uh, the invasion itself uh, occurred on. From on uh, during the night of uh, 20th uh, from 20th to 21st August, uh, in our archive we uh, keep some our materials, but mostly uh, uh, taken on uh, 16 millimeter film tapes, and we also keep uh, uh, keep uh, news reels that were broadcast in theaters at the time. So uh, it. It's also it also contains sound, and it was uh, taken on 35 millimeter movies. So I will play just sample from from this news reel. Rozstříštěná fasáda Národního muzea zůstane dlouho památkou na srpnovou noc na bratrskou pomoc našich nejvěrnějších spojenců. U rozhlasu hořelo dlouho. Bylo velice těžké uhasit tanky se zásobami pohoných hmot. Bylo složité hasit čtyři současně hořící domy. Takové suvenýry nám přivezla přátelská noční návštěva. Světové veřejné mínění stojí takřka jednomyslně za námi. Dokonce i ve východním Berlíně podepisují obyvatelé kondolenční archy na našem velvyslanectví. Dokonce před Kremlem došlo k pokusu o protestní demonstraci. V té době už také usilovně pracuje legální komunistická strana. To je především chtějí okupanti znemožnit činnost. Začíná se organizovat nemožné. Je svolán svobodný 14. sjezd uprostřed okupované Prahy. Do všech okresů republiky odcházejí pozvánky delegátům. Zjíždějí se za zvuků salv, tentokrát bohužel v podobě ostrých nábojů. I ve chvíli, kdy u muzea hoří tanky, pracují ústavní organizace věrné Dubčekovi a Svobodovi. Obyvatelstvo v podstatě zachovává klid, a snaží se zabránit násilným a siláckým akcím. David začíná bojovat proti Goliášovi svým osobitým způsobem, mozkem, vtipem, inteligencí proti hrubé síle a násilí. Na jehož straně je ostatně všechno jiné, jenom ne pravda. Uh, that was made by a uh, television cameraman. Um, this is, I will have to skip it, I'm afraid. Uh, and uh, I would say something about the broadcast uh, during the days of occupation. Uh, Soviet armies fo focused uh, very soon on on, uh, on Czechoslovak TV as, uh, as the main uh, source of, uh, of information for uh, for public, 
so they occupy headquarters and uh, but a TV crew they try to uh, to move very very quickly from occupied uh, premises to new uh, new rooms and they uh, kept creating makeshift st makeshift studios to continue in broadcast so uh, they managed to uh, they managed to uh, keep broadcasting during a uh, whole seven days of first seven days of occupation um, we may just we keep in our archives also some footage uh, uh, of Soviet soldiers occupying the headquarters of Czechoslovak television on the Vážné náměstí. It was taken illegally from opposite building. So we may see just some officers in the windows of, of the building. Yeah. Um, Um so uh they uh they they kept the T V makers uh kept moving around Prague and were escaping from the soldiers. Um and one of the places uh was then unfinished complex of buildings uh, where uh Czechos uh, Czech T V is now located. Um and they even managed to uh transport uh, some broadcast equipment by boat because uh, the the bridges were uh, were uh, occupied by soldiers, so they uh, were not able to transport the uh, equipment from one side to the other side of of uh, Vltava River. So it was uh, really a huge effort of of team makers to uh, to keep on broadcasting. So now we have some some mute footage from from the uh, makeshift studio. Uh, and it takes TV makers at a time. Just I think it may be my office now. I don't know. <laughs> it's it's a complex of of where now uh, Czech TV is located. Okay. And all uh, all TV workers had to work under uh, undercover. Um, in this guys, they were. Um, for example, this uh, picture shows a uh, studio where they have uh, some artificial wall behind them to uh, to pretend they broke out from a cellar. So and also uh, TV makers managed to uh, mm, smuggle uh, the materials out of the country, mostly to ORF, Austrian Television. It was broadcast to the world. So uh the Soviets didn't manage to keep it in secret um, the whole operation oh just I just used <laughs> the picture um, um, uh, Mr. Kodalkas I'm sorry I didn't get the permission uh, um, so uh, mm, Soviets were very on a rampage and uh, Brezhnev personally insisted on dismissal of Yuri Perikan as director general which really happened on the 1st of uh, September. Um, so, um, after uh, 27th August of uh, uh, 1968, uh, the illegal broadcast uh, was stopped. Uh, Soviet soldiers left the Czechoslovak TV premises, uh, but continuously uh, there were some acts of, of restoring uh, the uh the situation uh before the Prague Spring. So censorship was restored very quickly and uh, as I said Yuri Pelikan was dismissed very quickly. Uh by the way he managed to emigrate uh to Italy and uh, became politician there and member of uh, the European Parliament. So he's a very interesting person. And yeah so this is I, I have just two final clips. Um uh, first, uh, there is uh, uh, Václav Havel's speech uh, from April 1969 uh, about uh, this kind of warning what could happen to the society if uh, they don't keep up on spirit of the Prague Spring. And, uh, and the other pr program uh, I chose from uh, hundreds of programs that they produced during normalization. 
uh, and it shows how how uh, the expectations of Václav Havel uh, became true. So first, Havel's speech. No, já myslím, že je pravda, že tady existuje určitý veliký potenciál, který se, který se nějakým způsobem uvolnil během toho roku 68., který se projevil ve spoustě věcí, i třeba v té solidaritě národní a podobně. A že je reálné nebezpečí, že tento potenciál nějak se vytratí, že se nějakým způsobem jako rozplyne a podobně. A jediné východisko nebo jedinou takovou cestu, jak ho uchovat, a jak z něj vycházet, jak ho využít, vidím v tom, že prostě každý, že každý z nás v tom prostředí, ve kterém je, v těch podmínkách, které má k dispozici, každý jsme vržen do nějakých podmínek, prostě se bude snažit dělat maximum věcí, které budou jaksi v souladu s jeho svědomím a bude se snažit jaksi důsledně bojovat o ty malé, drobné věci v tom svém nejbližším prostředí, na závodech, v organizacích a podobně. Myslím si, že bychom ani neměli dost dobře právo kritizovat celostátní politiku, kdybychom měli nepořádek ve své vlastní organizaci, na svém vlastním závodě. Ono je vždycky snaží kritizovat vládu než svého bezprostředního mistra nebo šéfa. Ale myslím si, že jak si tam to začíná, v těch, nebojím se těch velkých nějakých špinavostí vládních a mezivládních, ale bojím se těch malých, co dělají lidi na sebe, navzájem, mezi sebou. A myslím si, že tady je třeba začít. A to potom jde dál. Když zameteme před vlastním Prahem, uděláme si pořádek kolem sebe ve vztazích lidí mezi sebou, tak to potom pokračuje dál a musí to mít nakonec nějaký vliv i na tu politiku nejvyšší. And, uh from the propaganda movies that were produced uh, during the 70s. It's hundreds of programs. I chose one that was broadcast uh, during summer 1970, and it shows some uh, friendship that uh, arised between uh, Soviet soldiers and some uh, peasants of, uh, of a small village in Bohemia. So we will just see. Společná práce našich družstevníků a příslušníků sovětské armády přinesla pro obě strany mnoho dobrého. Vzájemné poznání, vzájemnou důvěru a vzájemné přátelství. Ovšem nezůstalo jenom u těchto kladných otázek. Stalo se i to, že někteří občané Zaječova, Kvaně, nechtěli od nás odebírat brambory proto, že tyto brambory sbírali sověští vojáci. Dneska je to třeba k smíchu, ale bylo to tak. A dokonce některý naše tehdy takzvaný přátelé, chtějí z nás zesměšnit u druhých, nazvali naší obec Brežněvsí. No ukázalo se, že pravdu jsme měli my a ne oni. Mělo to znít jako pohan. Jaká ironie. V této vesnici v Čechách skončil před čtvrtstoletím válečné martyrium důstojník sovětské armády, jeden ze statisíců, kteří nasazovali život za osvobození Československa, Leonid Brežně. Už je to dávno. I ta nedávná minulost se ve světle těchto záběrů zdá být kdesi daleko. Dověděl se soudruh Brežněv při této příležitosti, že jedna malá obec ve středních Čechách získala v této nedávné minulosti jeho jméno? Jistě by se nezlobil. Určitě by mu to udělalo radost. Surely. <coughs> um, OK, so that's, uh, that's the end of my presentation. Uh, I have one more thing to show you. Uh, that we discovered some uh, some uh, some treasure, uh, hidden treasure, because uh, uh, we in uh, our archives uh, got uh, recently some new footage from 1968 that was um, uh, that was taken by a Catalan businessman who was uh, 
who was at the time in Prague. He arrived on 20th of August and he took on 35 millimeter camera, uh, unknown uh, footage, uh, unknown, uh, um, unknown, uh, some, uh, that's uh, something uh, that we hadn't seen before. So, um, and it's uh, in color and it's uh, on 35 millimeter film. So, uh, this is uh, of extraordinary quality. And uh, we transferred uh, this into HD. So, uh, it seems to, it seems like it was taken uh, yesterday. You know, it's very, uh, very reality. And Mute. Uh, it's mute with no sound, but uh, the footage is amazing. Okay. So, it's, uh, I have transcoded into lower resolution, but in HD it's really, really powerful to see that. So, we haven't seen anything like that before. So I think it's nine minutes long. So yeah, okay. So just just an example. Okay. So thank you. Martin, that was fantastic. I've known Martin now for about uh, well, quite a few months. We've been working together on a project, and now you know I work with him. <laughs> he is the best. Uh, and I, uh, I'm going to pass this off to the to the to the audience. Would you like to ask questions? That was absolutely brilliant. Um, this was just fantastic, and I would like to ask you. Now, it's obvious because you were able to create this that enormous amount of materials did survive uh, the Russian invasion, but can you tell us, were materials actually destroyed from the television materials? Um, can I take it off? Uh, thank you. Um, yeah. Uh, most of the uh, footage uh, survived, actually, but uh, some, uh, some footage where uh, we have some materials lost, uh, due either due to uh, censorship that they were thrown away or uh, due to some technical reasons. Uh, for example, uh, they were infected by uh, vinegar syndrome or something like that. So, but I think 90% of of materials survived. Yeah, so it's good. Thanks. Uh, s oh, sorry, was that a question or just a remark? Uh, sorry, I didn't get. Okay, well, uh, all right, sorry, I just misunderstood. Um, it was, I think, it was a way how, how Czechs deal with some uh, uh, 
uh, with some issues. It's uh, uh, they they just try to uh, mock it, you know. So uh, even uh, in this series you have seen here, uh, it's uh, it's very uh, it's very typical and common uh, that uh, mm, checks. I think they have a problem to take some uh, some 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 issue seriously. So uh, it's sometimes uh, the way how to how to deal with it. So uh, I think yeah, there may be tradition of uh, of some uh, check humor in the movies, not only in full feature movies in dramas, but also it was influenced. Uh, uh, it was spread to uh, to television production. So. Uh, yeah, so this is quite uh, typical for us, I think. Yep. Thank you so much for that great presentation. Uh, and I, it's made, made me curious about, about whether you've done research into what happened after 1968 and the, the whole process of how television was used in aid of normalization. Um, and just one, one quick remark, uh, Ota Bednarova ended up in jail herself in the 1980s. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, last, the, first, the only picture I, I remember of, of her is uh, looking out of her, someone took a pi picture of her looking out of a prison cell into the court courtyard. So, but uh, my, my main quick question is about, about how television was used in normalization. Uh, yeah, of course it became the main tool of propaganda uh, and uh, what you you have seen here. I mean, the last uh, uh, last clip I, I played here. It's uh, it's like maybe too too much. Uh, the propaganda later uh, was like uh, like smoother. Maybe it wasn't so so stupid and dumb, but still <laughs> still it was quite present there, and uh, they were uh, creating not only uh, documentaries and public affair propaganda programs, but also uh, dramas and whole TV series that uh, were depicting uh, like the life of officials and uh, for example they uh, telling their own story of the events of 1968. So yeah, it was a very, uh, very important tool for, uh, for Communist Party till 1989. So, yeah. Um, you you mentioned that um, uh, I think at least one of uh, one of the kind of series was kind of relaunched in in 1989. Is it, are, are there certain conti continuities from people in in in, in 1968? That kind of come back or, or, or kind of are, are relaunched. No, no, no. Actually, uh, it was just a concept of, of the of the program that uh, they uh, they used the same title for the series, but it was completely new, and it was focused. It was kind of restrained, critical form uh, in the late eighties. Uh, so um, after the Pestroika was released and Glasnost, so uh, the officials had to uh, allow. To uh, workers to create something similar in our TV, so that's why. But it had nothing in common with the previous uh, series from the six 1960s. Did did any of the people return that maybe ha had to leave in '68? Did any of them return to TV in in, in the Czech Republic after '89? Uh, you mean a re uh, re I don't know journalists, uh, TV producers, or some people who oh had to leave? Yeah, after 1989. You mean? Yeah, of course. They uh, even the first. One of the first directors, a uh, general uh, of uh, Czechoslovak TV, was one of the uh, documentarists who were fired, who was fired uh, during the purges. Yeah, uh, Jerzy Thank you for a fascinating presentation. And my question is about the vault, the uh, film of Trezoru. How extensive the vault was, and how did it work? And you know, in what way things were sort of archive kept? How much was lost because maybe of the storing condition, or just how extensive Trezor the vault was? Uh, how extensive? Uh, Trezor, film of Trezoru. Uh -huh. Jak to bylo velký? 
a jak se to tam udržovalo. What? OK, wow. Um, yeah, but uh, it was just, it wasn't in, like, it wasn't separated from the, from the collection, but uh, it was in the film library, it was stored in film library physically, but uh, it wasn't locked or something like that. Uh, but uh, the censorship uh, after 1968 uh, wasn't official, so uh, the creators, uh, the creators guaranteed, uh, guaranteed um, themselves that they wouldn't use it, uh, or they wouldn't broadcast it. So uh, uh, it wasn't there was no necessary to uh, just lock it down or something. It was uh, it was kind of. Auto censorship, I would say. No, I mean, for example, like uh, you know, films of Czech New Wave, they were hardly, uh -huh. you know, sort of uh, remastered. So, if you know maybe about the procedures, if there was some secret coding, you know, this could not be shown. This is or some no, sort of no, labeling system, that. or you know, if you know a little no. bit. But I know it's complicated. So. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't allowed to to get access to it to anyone. Uh, I must, in a funny way, ascribe some kind of positive feature to this terrible Czech television in the in the normalization times. You know, like many of you uh, sitting in this room, I've lived through all this period. And in the 50s, you know, where, where the TV started uh, transmitting, you know, my father would not allow to have this devil's machine at home at all, you know. And around 60, I think, we bought one, you know. And uh, it would stand in the room about three weeks, and then he literally thrown it out of the window, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I think it has a very positive effect of me and my brother that we went back to serious literature, you know, <laughs> studying languages, you know, listening music, uh, reading poetry, you know. <laughs> Who would dare to do so, you know, today? <laughs> so I would bow and say thank you to the Czech television that we have to devote our precious time to serious things. <laughs> that being said, I'm, I'm interested, given how closely you have looked at that sort of transitional moment, right, from before early 68 through 68 and then after, uh, you've called our attention to change in content, what, what became available to do, right, like topics that could be raised and so forth. Did you also notice any sort of change in style, no matter how terrible perhaps the television overall was, but like were the people responsible for making these films doing something slightly different in terms of the aesthetics of television or the aesthetics of storytelling, or was this, would you say it was the same style itself and it was just a different content? I think it was developing actually, uh, the style. Uh, they, they kept improving since uh, the beginning of 1960s. Uh, the more room they were given, uh, the more uh, like uh, mm, perfect they were in not only in content but also in form. I think it was uh, both together, yeah. There were uh, plays by Václav Havel and uh, Viskočil put on in the Divadlo uh, na Zábradlí. Were television crews admitted to, uh, it was maybe around 63, and even one of them was on still in 69, was the television crew admitted to uh, film some of these uh, performances, or was that not within your, uh, your interest? Um, frankly, uh, I don't know this exactly. Uh, in the 63, yeah. uh, we may have some uh, not the whole program, but uh, I think we may have uh, some uh, some news 
uh, news uh, reportage from there at that time. I think so, but I'm not, I'm not uh, sure. But I, I got kind of, uh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> I would have to uh, have closer look yeah, to, to re reply properly. Sorry. Thanks for everything else you showed us. Thank you. No, <laughs> uh, no, we have no such a thing. But of course, there are some attempts to influence our broadcast from politicians. It will be al always here. So now it's getting stronger, I think, from president, uh, presidential, from people around president, and of course, maybe around prime ministers. So it could be tough for us, <laughs> but uh, so far, so good. Yeah. I have a question about uh, Russian language in during the communism on Czechoslovak TV. If there were some programs in Russian, and uh, was English also present in the Czechoslovak some TV? Some courses or uh, yeah, yeah or courses or uh, yeah, reportages from Russia or from uh -huh. Soviet oh Union. Yeah, yeah, yeah of in course, there were some. Language. Yeah, there were some, but of course. Uh, they were much, um, much more from uh, from uh, Soviet Union than from the U.S. or Western. But also, uh, it wasn't like the Western world wasn't ignored totally. So, there were some uh, some documentaries from even from U.S. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. But it was uh, like a kind of propaganda. So they were showing the dark side of the society and so on, mm -hmm. um, uh, like. Uh, beating of the Af Afro-Americans and so, <laughs> so yeah, okay. those kind of cliches. Mm.